Hi folks, we're in the Cobb TV studio here in Marietta for our weekly chat with Cobb Commission Chairman uh, Mike Boyce and uh, both of us chairman are still recovering from Tuesday night's board <laughs> meeting uh, as we sit here. But um, you mentioned during that meeting that it was one of the biggest nights uh, for the board when it came to uh, step in grade for public safety. Yes, uh, I, I just, I know it's hard for, uh, for some to understand what a big deal this is, but if you're in public safety, you know this is a big deal. Uh, they've, been, they've been looking for some sort of assurance from this board that uh, their voices are heard and, it, and, it, and their voices reflect the reality out there of what it takes to provide public safety for, uh, for our public. And I don't think the money issue is so much about the money as it is about the confidence they have in this board that we have their back. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to diminish the um, the two issues there. One of them is is that it's a pretty significant pay uh, increase for the entry level employees. But the reason that we have that issue the way it was done and the compression that comes with it at the top is because the command staff of public safety wanted to take care of you know the those, those, those officers are out there every single day uh, doing the patrolling, and that's where the challenge we have of keeping officers here in, in our public safety departments because um, we have this competition between other counties and cities in this region of us robbing Peter to pay Paul. So they wanted to address that issue uh, by taking care of that structure of the public safety department first, and then we would deal with the compression issue at the top uh, later and the uh, compression for those who don't understand is that you have let's say you have this new play structure uh, for the entry level employee is going to bring somebody in at the same level where somebody's been with public safety for four or five years that's the compression and there's an equity issue there and we get that but in order to achieve the greater good all right we have to sometimes make smaller sacrifices at the beginning so what I try to uh, my my point of view is is that I never worry about what somebody else makes. I only worry about what I make, and if I don't think that that's a responsive uh, compensation, then I try to do something about that. But I think that now we have the command staff and we have uh, the unions, the FOP and the fire union, working together collectively to address all these issues in a methodical fashion over the next three to five years. And I think we all come to understand that I believe they had the confidence in the board. I heard that from the board on uh, Tuesday night, that they're concerned about how we're going to uh, identify the revenue stream that's going to pay for this increased compensation, and they want to fence that off to make sure that money's there. I'm fine with that. Uh, that even gives more assurance to the public safety that, yep, not only uh, is a step and grade going to be implemented, but we're going to continue to sustain it in the years ahead. So I heard nothing but good things from the uh, three other commissioners that were there, and I really, really commend them for taking this very important step. Uh, I hope they look back in the years that when this thing finally flushes out, that they, they were part of something that made a difference in this county that protect, that does, that addresses our number priority, which is public safety. And I had a chance to talk to the interim public safety director, Randy Kreider, yesterday, and he was trying to get the word out to, to the men and women in public safety about sure. what had happened right. last night. And, and, you know, in an ideal world, they would have liked to have done it all in one sure. fell right. swoop to avoid that compression, but it would have been too expensive. Uh, and he's hoping in three years, three years down the road, that we would have all this uh, finally aligned properly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not confident we'll be, given you know the economic direction and prosperity of the county. I, I can assure everyone here that unless I thought there was a way to sustain this, I would not have supported this. And that, you know, that's that goes to political pandering. All right? Everybody wants to take care of your police and your firemen uh, and your deputies and public safety, but well, I don't believe in doing something you can't pay for it. All right. And because if you do that, uh, when it comes time to pay the bill and you don't have the money, then you're going to be taking the money from somebody else, you know, taking money off their back to help somebody else. That's just not a fair one. We've done that in the past, which is how we got into where we did in 2017. But the beauty of all this is that I thought this is something we would have to be addressing in the 2021 budget. But the condition of the county is so good that the county manager realized, and this is a priority for many, many of us on the board, he took the initiative along with Randy Kreider, the interim director of public safety, to get with the sheriff and also bring in the unions to say, look, I think we can do this now, but in order for us to do this successfully, we have to all be together. We have to have a united front. And we saw that on, uh, on Tuesday night. And I just I go back to the um, public comments of last summer 
when we were uh, proposing the budget. All those um, young men and women that are out there, you know, making sure that, they, that we knew they were there and they were watching us very closely that we passed a budget that would provide them a 7% pay raise uh, that would follow, had followed up on the incentive bonuses we did in the spring. So again, if the, if the money's there, there's no reason not to do this because public safety either is your number one priority or it's not. And if it is your number one priority and you have the resources to do it, then why aren't you doing it? It's just, to me, a reasonably sound way to do it. Uh, so this is, the, this is another great step in our effort to address a long-time problem. And I'm really, really delighted that Commissioner Gambrel, Commissioner Cupid, uh, and Commissioner Burrell joined me uh, in passing this monumental piece of leg legislation. So that was the biggest vote of the evening, mm -hmm. but the, the biggest thing Tuesday night that kept us until almost Wednesday morning mm -hmm. uh, was uh, code amendments sure. that come up typically maybe a couple times a year. I think this year we're trying to do it just once a year, right. and there's always one or two items in those code amendments that attract a lot of attention. Sure. Well, I think that, that what happened Tuesday night represents a statement about how confident the people are uh, in this board. Because I can assure you that unless people realize that their voice is going to be heard and they thought that their voice would make a difference, they wouldn't have stayed as late as they did to make all those comments. Uh, people's time is very valuable. I've come to realize is that of all the things that are in people's lives right now that maybe be the most Dominate. It is their time. It is very valuable. So they're not going to come and sit there uh, for hours unless they believe that they're going to get some measure uh, of, uh, I'm not going to say satisfaction, but a measure uh, of, of confidence that the board is hearing them. Now, I have no idea how the board's going to vote on this yet, all right? Um, uh, granted, at the end of the meeting, there was a motion to withdraw, but this is a great example of how either way you lose, all right? But you never lose if you let the people hear everything speak first, and then you make a call for a decision. If we had uh, allowed that motion to come forward at the start of the meeting, uh, one argument is that, well, at least people uh, didn't have to sit there all night and think that their time was wasted. Yeah, except the fact is that all those people came there all right, with the expectation to be heard, and they'd have been just as angry if they had not been heard, all right? Saying, you can't say, well, we withdraw the motion, but we still want to hear you. That makes no sense, all right? If we know we're not going to support this, why would they sit there, you know, for four hours and, uh, you know, knowing that nothing's going to come out of this? But I think the real issue there is that they drove, they, they planned that meeting. They, all those presentations that they did, and they were really impressed. They, whoever these proponents were, they got together clearly and organized their presentations. They were all three minutes. They were all different topics for the most part. So they spent a lot of time preparing for that meeting. And to have them show up without any advanced knowledge where they can, you know, realize that, well, tonight we're not going to really be discussing this, that's just disrespectful to them. And I thought that, you know, I was not going to support that kind of action. The other thing is, is that we had a mechanism for addressing that issue if we're going to withdraw it or approve it or, or revise it, which is the vote on February 11th. So I think there's nothing wrong you know, with waiting to hear everybody because something may happen in the next two weeks. Uh, I've already gotten a phone call from the uh, Secretary of Agriculture about that. He knows about what's going on at these things and he's, you know, the, their side has to be heard too. All right, so again, I counsel in some cases, you know, you have to be a little bit more patient. There's a time to call a question and have it voted on, but Tuesday night was not the time. Uh, so my whole line is, is that you, if you default on the side, if you err on the side, listen to the people first, and then take an action, uh, even if they don't approve of your ultimate vote, at least they can't say that their voices weren't heard. And for those that aren't familiar, when you do these public hearings on code amendments, you have an unlimited amount of speakers. Yes, Pretty you much do. anybody who wants to get up there can talk for three minutes. That's right. And I, I don't know if we set a record Tuesday night, but it was probably <laughs> That's pretty, pretty close. Probably pretty close to it. So where do we go from here? Well, on February 11th, uh, in the morning meeting of, uh, of, for the board, we will continue to hear uh, comments from the public about this issue. And then uh, the board will decide, uh, uh, code section by code section, whether or not we're going to support it. Now, if you step back and look at the whole meeting, apparently, all the other amendments, and there are a lot of amendments out yeah, there. There, are. there were a lot of amendments out there. And they're all available on our webpage if anybody wants to go look Appreciate at them. Appreciate bringing that up, you know. But the things, the things that I heard most about were, A, obviously about the sale of animals, all right? Um, the uh, leash law, whether or not, and, and there, I got a really great, 
email from, from someone saying, so if we have a rodeo here in, uh, in Cobb County, then you have to put, you have to put the, you know, the horse on a leash. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was kind of funny, but they got a point. All right, so there are a lot of variations here of how uh, we uh, use animals here in the county of how we, you know, for pets or for entertainment or for whatever, uh, that sometimes our law will have an adverse impact on that. So those are the kind of things that we want to hear from them. And then there was one other thing, there was so many things going on too, and I've lost track of all of them. But the bottom line here is, all the, of all the other things that we heard that night, oh, backyard chickens, I'm sorry, yep. how could I forget that? Um, all the other ones, there were no comment. So that tells me we could almost vote those by consent. Uh, because if, if I don't hear any emails about it, or if I don't get a, uh, if I don't, I don't come to come to comment, then that tells me that the voices, uh, the people are content with what's going on. And, and I know that people are reading these code amendments because of the number of people that showed up on Tuesday night. So to say that uh, we haven't done a good job of publicizing these code amendments the literally hundreds of people that are there on Tuesday night. Remember, we had to have put people in the boardroom, and then we had an overflow room. So that tells me that we're doing a great job, you're doing a great job with your staff, of getting the word out there, telling people, here's what's going on in your county. Uh, get involved, come out here and talk to us, and we'll see what we can do to help you out. And even as we wind our way through the code amendments, we have the state of the county coming up next, early next month. Sure. Um, then we're hard to work on uh, SPLOST. Right. Uh, developing a list, mm -hmm. getting a list of town hall and open house locations right. uh, coming up. I mean, that's going to take up a lot of the next few months. Well, I think the good news right now is is that because, as we all know, you showed this the slide uh, about my budget priorities for the summer. Matter of fact, if you could put it up again, I'd appreciate it. It's very simple. You know, we're not changing the millage rate. We're going to continue to reduce the water fund transfer, and we need to continue to show our staff. How much we appreciate them by another, you know, by bringing, introducing, and proposing another merit raise. I don't know what that's going to, how much that's is going to be. But those are the only three things. That's a, that's half a slide. So uh, that allows us for the next six months to go out and talk to the public about the SPLOS projects. We had a really, really good meeting with all the mayors yesterday uh, to show them where we are in the SPLOS. Uh, we're coordinating our effort here to have the town halls. Uh, we're going to have 20 town halls started in March through April to uh, get the public comment on this. So we can make sure that what we, what we send out there and when we write the language for the referendum in uh, November is what uh, reflects what we hear from the public. But again, another option is, is they're gonna say, hey, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to extend the, the spot. That is an option. If we hear that out there, uh, the consequences of not renewing the spots are monumental. And I just want to say one thing, one thing only. <laughs> I need two more mills from everybody. We need two more mills from everybody to resurface the roads. And I don't know who's going to lead that charge to raise the millage rate by two mills. You can look, but you can see right here on camera, you're not looking at the guy that's going to do that, all right? <laughs> so uh, I just think that this is going to be a great opportunity for everybody to come out here and give us your thoughts as we come out there and show you what the, what the staff has done, working with the mayors and the commissioners to uh, put some projects out there that continue to reflect our effort to keep Cobb County, Cobb County a place where we can safely work, live, play, and pursue our dreams in the 21st century. One thing that really has come across clear to me, and I had a chance to talk to pretty much all the mayors in preparation for our uh, MLK ceremony we just had, how precious and needed that revenue stream is for the cities. We, th we think about it as a county-wide SPLOS, but boy, the cities, they, the message is they really need that revenue stream. Yeah, it's, and it's become part of how we fund our, uh, our operations, you know, our capitalization right now. And, uh, I'll just give one example. And this is the one that, for me, was the most convincing to have me come off the five-year SPLOS to the six-year SPLOS. If I want to build, if we want to build a $10 million building, we could probably pay for that with our SPLOS collections in about six months. It would take the city of Austell 10 years to do that, okay? And they, that, they might need that building just as importantly as we need our building here in this county. We do not want to penalize uh, a city uh, in, order, in order to keep them uh, competitive with all the other cities in the county and the region by doing something that doesn't allow them you know, to, uh, to take the necessary steps to help them with their revitalization efforts. And the second thing is, which was, for, was a distant second, without a six-year SPLOS, the commissioners would not have had any opportunity to have discretionary project products put into the SPLOS. The, the revenue simply would not have been there because the two big issues in this SPLOS are public, are public safety 
and uh, uh, Department of Transportation projects. They eat up a, a vast amount of the revenue that we need to, uh, to you know, restore our roads to uh, 21st century uh, conditions and to continue this momentum we have with uh, bringing our 21st, uh, our police department and our sheriff and uh, uh, fire department, fire department uh, to help to continue to help them to maintain 21st century standards. Yeah. And again, we're still finalizing the uh, public information open house dates and, and everything, but I think the message you want to get out there is people will have plenty of opportunity right. to have a say in renewing this lost. I think if, if anybody knows Mike Boyce by now, right, uh, I, I come to them. They don't have to come to us. But if they want to come to us at our board meetings, we welcome them and we do everything we possibly can to accommodate hearing them, Incruise, including in many cases, adding a number of slots, slots we have for public comment from 12 to sometimes as many as 20. Yeah. All right, as soon as we get those dates for the open houses, we'll have that on uh, CobbCounty.org and all the newsletters, including yours as well. And Chairman, I guess uh, busy times ahead, so we'll be uh, checking in with you next week. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks.